Okay, now it's recording. I can share it. So, oh. I'm gonna. Can you guys all see my screen? Yep, I can. Okay, for those those of you on the phone, I went to YouTube, and I got uh, get the basics on indexed annuities. It's a video that I share with clients, and I wanted to start with this. So everybody, you do not actually invest in it. Play well, this with your clients, you and when you get it, depend on the features of your particular contract. Generally, index annuities have an interest rate floor, a participating and a cap that determines the amount of interest you earn. Your interest earnings rate always remains somewhere between the floor and the cap. It does not rise above the cap, even if the index goes higher. Conversely, it never falls below zero, even if the index goes way down. So the value of your money will never decline for as long as it is in the annuity, but it can increase with a rising index. Once interest is credited, it also can never be lost due to interest rate adjustments or negative market fluctuations, and it may even compound. That means more potential growth than other fixed annuities or simple savings plans, and less risk than variable annuities and other more volatile investments, bringing some balance to your retirement plan. Like all annuities, the index type offers tax-deferred growth. You aren't taxed on interest earnings while your money stays in the annuity. The process of choosing an index annuity can also give you peace of mind. These financial products are backed by some of the world's largest, most reputable insurance companies and can only be sold by licensed insurance professionals who are mandated to receive product-specific training. Companies are required in most cases by the state's insurance department to ensure that every index annuity sale is suitable for the customer's age, financial situation, and goals. And while agents are paid commissions, no sales compensation is ever deducted from your annuity principal. Now that you know the basics about index annuities, learn more here. That's it, man. I show them that little little snippet and uh, and I get them. Um, Hello, I'm Dick, and I'm Eric, and we're the annuity guys. Who Eric understand uh, index annuities? Um, okay, here we are. Let me get started now. I can get the hell out of that. Okay, good morning, guys, and uh, again, down at the bottom is a chat box. So if anybody has any questions during this. You can ask at the bottom, please, and uh, that will be helpful for me to help you understand how to, how to make the sell. So in life insurance sales, there's strategies, there's techniques that have been used by many, many, many for over the years, whether they knew it or not. But uh, in the beginning, it's kind of tough to get in the uh, mindset to understand that this is easier than you know. If you keep it simple, stupid, isn't that spelled out like kiss? Keep it simple, stupid, yes, keep it simple, stupid. So what we're gonna do today is just go over and review some life insurance strategies, uh, sales techniques, so you can get into the home and double the amount of premium that you're used to selling. So what I'd like to focus on is doubling the amount of premium that you're used to selling today. And what that means is just like, if you're selling final expense and you're used to the $30 apps, the $50 apps, let's get that up to 80 to 100, $120 per app. <clears throat> Hence meaning that you have to see less people and make more money, period. And that's all I do, guys. I probably see, shit, I probably see three to five people a week, but I can bank on five to $10,000 a week on, on my best weeks. And if I sell larger, uh, products like the indexed annuities, I can uh, increase that uh, substantially. So I'm going to, um, give me one second, everybody. I have to make sure that everybody has this because people text me and shit. They don't know how to get on here for some reason. I, I, can I ask you a question? Anybody answer me this? Is this difficult to get on to? Is it easy to understand? I mean, I think it is, right? So the one, two, three thing, because I never had to get onto it. My way of getting onto it is different than yours, I imagine. No, it's just hard if you don't send the link. And then you gotta go oh, oh, I got you. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's, it's easy. Like it's always on GroupMe and it's always on uh, 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 Facebook and LinkedIn and things like that too. So I probably did forget to send the link to email, my email blast. 
Um, so here's we go. So what, when we, I'm going to just start from the door on. I need to write some notes down so I don't know what I'm talking about. So I don't lose my place. So when you let's start, how about this? Let's start at the dial. The most important part of this subject is the dial to me because I feel that if you dial more and land more prospects, they're called prospects, by the way, before you they become clients, they're prospects. So know the difference between the language. The prospect is somebody that has not purchased a product from you who is just aware of the information that you're, they're, you're about to uh, give to them. And uh, once you get into a position to have a, enough lead flow, you can obviously see more people, which comes through more money. So for the beginners out there, I'd like to get started by saying, hang in there. All you need is one or two big deals to get, get cranked up. And then you have to be smart enough to invest. I, it, look, if you have, I know people that I'm helping right now that have skipped their mortgage payment, their rent, they put it aside for a week or two in trusting me that I can get them to a point to start making money in the next two weeks. And then they can pay two months rent off. And sometimes that's the way business goes. The most successful people in life, if you ask them the toughest times in their life, were the times that they made the complete sacrifices that got them to the successful points in their life. So you have to make sacrifices to be successful, period. So we're in a prospect situation. We dialed the number. We said, hey, Mrs. Jones, my name's Jason. I'm doing a follow-up call to the call that you received yesterday on that final expense information. I'm the guy that handles your area. I'm going to be in your area tomorrow. I'm going to need you in, Mr. Jones, there about 1 p.m. Does that work good? That great? Okay, I'm not married. Okay, well, I'm going to need somebody there that helps you make important decisions. Jerome, did you hear that? All right. <laughs> I need somebody there that helps me make important decisions. You do not want to go on a one leg. Or look, there are leads out there now that are 50-50. It means it's a 50-50 deal. If you get these leads, there's no cost to them up front. If somebody is working these leads, anybody out there, and uh, you need to follow up with these people, do not trust that these appointments are set. If anybody ever sets your appointments for you to an appointment setter, make sure that they're well-trained. So never go to an appointment without recognizing two things. One, that they are there. You had to solidify that damn call and make sure that they're there. Two, make sure that there's somebody there with them, somebody that helps them make important decisions or even the beneficiary. That's all that you need to do to get into the home. Once you're at the door, be prepared. Is your car prepared? Do you have all the things that you need from the carriers? Have, have each and every one of you ordered everything that you can possibly order from the carriers to make sure that you're well prepared inside the home? I sell on visual. I don't sell on this. My mouth is moving, but they're always looking at something. I'm always presenting something. It could be, um, uh, uh, let me show you something. It could be some, I don't care what it is. I don't care what I got in front of me. If 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 it's if I don't if I reach into my bag and I don't I'm not prepared myself, I'll find something in that bag. Fixed deferred annuities. If I'm talking about that, I'm pulling out something on that. Um, anything that you have, or this. This is real simple. Have this in this, which is a pen, for those that you can't see. It's a pen and paper, and use that and draw the map out. What you're doing, the first thing you're doing is building rapport at a point of trust, which comes and starts at the door. Hello, Mrs. Jones, how are you doing? My name is Jason. I'm the guy that's here to give you that information on that final expense information you requested. Um, okay, can we go to that table over there? Let's go to that table right there. I'm gonna need to lay some things out. Again, let's go to that table right there. I'm gonna need to lay some things out. One more time. Let's go to that table over there. I need to lay some things out. Or, hey, Mrs. Jones, can we use that table right there? I need to lay some things out. I don't, I don't even know if you know how important what I just said is until you're in that situation. I want you guys to visualize these situations as we go through them. And for those of you that have already been in these situations, you can visualize them even better. So you know what it's like to walk through the door and kind of, it, 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 if you're new at it, you, you don't know what, you don't even know what to do or what to say. It's kind of nerve wracking. So what I want to do is alleviate the nerves and just tell you to calm the fuck down, man. Calm down, calm down and take it slow, man. All, there, all you're there to do is present some information. That's it. That's all you're there to do. You're not a salesman. I always say, here, I'm here to tell, not sell. Remember those words. I'm here to tell, not sell. 
And believe me, they trust you a hell of a lot more if you're not a salesman and you become human. So, hey, Mrs. Jones, how you doing? I'm going to go over a few things with you. I'm going to treat you just like you came into my office. Once you say those words, I'm going to treat you just like you came, you came into my office. It puts you in charge. The visualization on this whole setting now is you in your office, which gives you more control inside their home. I'm going to treat you just like you're in my office, like we're in my office today, which means I'm going to go over a few things that you may know or may not know. So let's start. Mrs. Jones, I have you down as 76 years old. Remember, at the top, top of a sheet of paper, I want you to write their name down and age. And Mr. Jones, write his name down and age. And two things this does. One, you know their age at all times. So you don't have to fumble back and forth through paperwork. Two, you always remember their name. I'm real bad with names. Like, real bad. I have to continuously look down and say, and, and, and another thing, I'm saying Mrs. Jones just for this reenactment, but what I want you guys to do is I want you to say their first name. That's more personable and don't, this is not the era of, this is not the business. I don't want to say era of time because I always show my elders respect in, 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 in effect where I call them Mr. and Mrs. But this is not the business to do that in. You need to say it by first name and that puts you into a position uh, of authority. So I'm gonna call this one Ann, and I'm gonna call this guy Bruce. Bruce is 50 years old, and Ann is 50 years old also. I'm gonna keep the numbers even. I put it at the top of a sheet of paper, which I'm gonna show you, boom and boom. This is final expense, by the way. This is a simple way to sell final expense. Okay, Mrs. Jones, first thing I wanna ask you guys, by the way, do you guys have life insurance? I'm already in the house, and I think with me, I, I present myself in a way where I build rapport pretty quick. So if you feel like you need to build rapport a little further than this, go ahead. You could do it two ways. You could come out and ask for the life insurance if you feel rapport is built and there's simple people to work with, but you can never guess that. So sometimes building rapport at a point of trust is better. So let's do it by building rapport since you guys are kind of new at this, newer than me anyway. So building rapport, easy. How you doing? How the weather, hurricanes suck. Yeah, you lose power, boom, boom. I love the picture on the wall. The grass is cut, the kids look great. Let's keep moving. Where'd you grow up at? I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I moved to Florida. I've been here two years, my company. I'm a partner at the company. Like you guys to say that too, I'm a partner at the company and not just a sales rep. Makes you look like a managerial position. I'm a manager, I'm a partner uh, in this position now that you have more information on yourself and a little rapport belt, you can move into the sales part. So let's move into the sales. So Mrs. Jones, you have life insurance on you. Either one of you have life insurance. Okay, great. Now leave it at that. Now that you know that they have life insurance, don't ask for it yet. Don't ask them to pull it out yet. I just want you to know that they have life insurance or not. Now, I know that they have life insurance, and this part's vital to you. Don't tell them to go get it yet. You're, you're, not, that, you're not that cool with them yet. Okay, you have life insurance? Uh, great. So, uh, you know what? Just for death reasons, so I can figure out what Mrs. Jones is going to be left with, uh, Bruce. I'm sorry. I'm going to call him Bruce. Bruce, I'm going to ask you, what, what is, who has the two of the higher social securities? Remember those words. Who has the two of the higher social securities? And this is like a format, um, this, this, sales, this sales strategy is like a format that I use in at like almost every home. I don't know if it changes too much. So now I'm into Social Security. Mrs. Jones has $1,000 a month. Mr. Jones, no, actually, I'm sorry, guys. We have two 50-year-olds. Well, they're not collecting Social Security, so we would have to ask about disability. Is anybody collecting Social Security disability? Let's just hypothetically say Mrs. Ann is. She's earning $700 a month, and she's disabled. We know that she could be a graded product right now. That's another thing that does. We're not sure yet, but it could give you a hint on what product you may need to use. For those of you trying to use index products, you may want to say to yourself, I may need to deter from using an index product. Guys, and you can use index products for final expense life insurance too, but 
remember, final expense pays a hell of a lot faster through Mutual of Omaha, just using their regular level products uh, and uh, prosperity. So those two are the only ones that you really need. Really, I mean, I don't see any reason to use anything else. Mutual of Omaha has the best prices. Prosperity gets about anybody through, and that's, that's about it. Mr. Jones is still working, however. So, Mr. Jones, uh, at your job, does it come like with a uh, 401k or, or a pension that, that Mrs. Jones would receive, God forbid, if something happened to you? Uh, yeah, I have a 401k. Oh, boom. I know now that they have a 401k. However, they're working. It's matched. So I know if in my notes for, for, for my files, guys, in the future, you can still use these clients also. So in my files, you may want to put a tab at the top of the file before you file it away. It has a 401k, uh, plans on retiring in 15 years. So Mr. Jones, when do you plan on retiring, by the way? Are you going to work forever? Are you going to retire? You know, I'm going to retire in five to 10 years. I can put that at the top of my notes, and now I know I have an index annuity to work with in five to 10 years if you're still in the business, which the likelihood of that could be very good for a lot of you. Or even send one of your reps out to go sell it if you build an organization. 10 years. Anyway, get back into the sale. So at this point, what I have is I have the prospect. I have um, built report to the point of trust. I have the, I know that they have life insurance. I'm not sure how much yet. I know that uh, Social Security is not on the table. Mrs. Jones collects $700 a month in disability. I know that Mr. Jones has a 401k. Now, Mr. Jones, just for financial reasons, um, if something were to happen to you and you were to collect workman's comp, uh, like how much, what, what is about your weekly? What are you bringing in? Just so we can calculate what you guys in the worst case scenario and workman's comp would bring in. We can calculate what it might be. So you're bringing in about what, 8,000 bucks a week? Let's say he's bringing in about $1,000 a week. That's $4,000 a month. I don't want you to know what the month weekly is. I want you to really know what the monthly is. So, because that's what number we're going to work from. Now I have two numbers put together. I know that the income at the home is $4,700 a month. And, and that's not too bad. Now I know, inside my brain, I'm thinking, holy shit. Now I got to figure out, if you look around the house, you can figure out what's going to be about left over. Now we get into a position where we can start talking about things. Okay, so what is your plans, guys? Do you plan on, are you guys like doing a do cremation or burial? Because there's a difference in price, and I just want to know, are you guys doing a cremation? And then you may get somebody that says, I already have it taken care of. I've already paid for the plot. Well, that's great, you know what I mean? But I've been doing this for, you know, I, I tell people you've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for the past 10 years, and I'm going to tell you something. that you got to believe me when I tell you, with inflation, Always use the word inflation. With inflation, nothing's ever truly taken care of. We don't know what the cost of bread will be into the future. So you might have the funeral taken care of, but there's going to be a final way that we need to help Mrs. Jones in the future too. She's going to need money. Today's percentages on inflation are 4% average, which means in 10 years, things will be 40% more. That's this line here. I got to erase this board real quick here. How to sell life insurance is what the board says. So, again, we have our inflation line. Now, you guys will have a level income, too, at that time. So, when you guys retire, you're probably going to retire. At, you're not going to retire at $4,000 a week. You're going to probably retire at something like $2,000 a week. And I hope it's more, but you know how the 401k works, Mr. Jones. When you retire, that bad boy's going up and down, and God forbid you take a 30% loss now. You don't even have enough time to get it back by, by the time you retire. So what I'm going to do is suggest, I'm going to suggest, I'm going to suggest my professional opinion. I'm going to suggest. That makes you look like a pro. My professional opinion is this is that we make up for any losses due to market volatility through these products. So let's hypothetically say that your um, 401k is 100 grand right now. Maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. And you retire at $70,000, worst case scenario, the market dives, you lose 30 grand, you retire with 70. Well, we know that $70,000 will get you about what? How long will 70000 what will $70,000 be for every year for 10 years? That's about 7000 bucks a year, right? 
That's seven thousand dollars a year for the next ten years, and you know you can't just live off of that. Plus, your Social Security will probably be about two thousand bucks a month. So you'll be bringing in about twenty five hundred bucks a month with inflation. You're going to need a little more. So, long story short, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the products that I have for you, and I'm going to qualify you through this. But first, what I'm going to do. I'm going to see your life insurance products. How much life insurance do you have? Now I'm coming back to the life insurance. And I'm, I'm going to review this whole sales process through mortgage protection too. So you're going to get another view on a different product, but this is final expense for now. Uh, Mr. Jones, how much are you leaving behind to Mrs. Jones? Now, you see how like I'm so in it with them now? They trust me a little more to ask for this product, ask this situation. I am leaving her $10,000 in life insurance. You know who that's with? Uh, yeah, that's with uh, Transamerica. Transamerica, I know, well, here's, how long have you had it? Oh, I've had that for 20 years. Oh, you know, first thing that comes to my mind, what do you think I think of when I hear that a product's been in play for 20 years? Anybody know? Cash value. Oh, there we go. I got the old CV, cash value. Bang, home run. So, how much are the premiums monthly, Mr. Jones? Uh, they're about 50 bucks a month. I'm like, okay, that's $6,000 a year minus about half of that. That's $3,000, $3,000. It's about $6,000 in cash value plus interest. So, there's anywhere from six dollars to $8,000 in there. I've seen enough of them to calculate what the hell is in there already. So, I know there's six dollars to $8,000 in there. That's fantastic. Uh, let me ask you something. Could you guys use money? Do you need any money today? Is there anything you'd like to do? Would you like to, in, how about increasing the value of the home? So if you were able to have $10,000 today, what would you do with it? Oh, I'd, you know, I'd probably pay off my bills. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little th something and see if you're interested in doing it. It's just an option. It's just, just, just an option. All I'm doing now is showing you options, Bruce. And uh, what the hell is the lady's name? See, I got to go back and check on my, I don't even know. And this, I'm role playing. I got to go check on the lady's name. Her name's Ann, by the way. So, Ann, I'm going to check on something. And then, uh, Ann, how much are you leaving to Mr. Jones? I'm sorry, Bruce. How much are you leaving to Bruce? Um, I don't have any life insurance I'm leaving to Bruce. So, she has zero life insurance, which is a good place for you to be in. You've got cash value, and you have somebody with no life insurance, okay? It opens up the doors. Okay, let's, guys, if I can help you, I just want to check one more thing. Just give me one more second, and I'm going to check on something. How much is the mortgage monthly about? Oh, that's about, uh, I'm just, because I want to just see what Mrs. Jones, or I'm sorry, Ann is going to be left with. What's Ann going to be left with? If God forbid something happened to you tomorrow, she has your 401k, she has uh, your, your $10,000, but then she has a lot of life to live. She's got 30, 40 years to go. So, you know, this is a good thing for you guys to remember too. The span of time that she has to live is about 40 years if you do it till age 90. So remember to note now in your notes at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page, Anne has 40 years to live. This you're going to come back to. I have, um, we have zero dollars on life insurance for Anne. We have a $10,000 policy on him. Um, and then your next step is going to be soon you're going to uh, want to contact Transamerica. So you guys need to have life insurance companies' phone numbers built into your phone already. So if you don't, put these numbers into your telephone so it's faster. You don't want to be Googling Transamerica in front of the client. Have it prepared and put it into your phone before you uh, get into these homes. Okay, so next step. I'm still going over the mortgage is $600 a month. The electric, the cars, the car insurance, the, more, uh, the, the cable bill, the cell phone bill, the food Food's about $50 to $100. I want you guys to help them walk through this. Don't sit there at the table and ever be silent too long. It, it throws everything off. So if I'm helping them walk through this, the electric bill, if you just, let me put it to you this way. If I were to just ask what your electric bill is and I sat and waited, there's a time span where A, I'm wasting time to get to the next client, B, they're kind of thinking too hard and it could throw this off. You don't want them thinking too much or too hard. So is your electric bill about $100 to $200? If I feel that there's five seconds has gone past, 
I'm going to be like, is it about $100, 105 150? See, if I throw numbers at them, they're going to start thinking about it. So I want you guys to help them walk through the process of finding the numbers that they, that, that they spend every month, their debt. Debt to income ratio. Cars, the car's about 400 bucks a month, so on and so on. And I want you guys to get all the way to the pet. The pets usually cost 20 to $50 a month. Car insurance, 100, 200, uh, $1,200 a year, something like that. And then I want you to take your calculator out. If somebody says it's 1,200 bucks a year or $600 every six months, you can obviously do that math in your head, but I sometimes even need a calculator when they tell me even numbers. So get your calculator, must be out at all times too to do this, wait, this sales, but this sales, how do you get big numbers? I promise you. So now you know that if they say six months, uh, every six months I spend $600 on my car insurance, that's a hundred dollars a month. I want you to find the monthly. They have $4,700 a month coming in. You still know that you asked that question. You figured that out. Now they have what? Let's say they have 2000 bucks a month going out. That number is probably false. It's probably more like 2,500. But go off the lowest number and, and, and figure it out from there if you want. Or just get, try to figure out the exact number. Some people pull out their bill statements and go over it with you. They have like a sheet where they know exactly what they spend every month. In this case, there's $2,700 a month left over. Okay, so you guys have about $2,700. I'm, I'm good enough to say to them, on a worse month, you may have 1000 bucks left over. So you guys are putting that into a savings account? Is that something you're doing? Yeah, we're, we put most of it in the savings. Okay, so now I know what's going away. I have all the numbers put together, guys. So my next step is, here's what I have for you guys. You have $10,000 in life insurance, Bruce. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that you built cash value. They're about, how much is, the, they're about 4.5% interest annually on your cash value. Here's my suggestion. I'm going to look at some numbers, and I'm going to see what I can get you today. And I'm going to try to get close to that $10,000 as I can or get you more. So let's go over, review your health. Uh, how is your health? Do you take any medications? This is the point where I'm asking questions about medications. So you take any medications? Okay, no, you're healthy. Great. He's healthy. Let's move on. We're going to look at Mutual of Omaha. Or if you're good, you can look at the index products if you want and have them send you an illustration from LSW. You can call LSW and say to Bruce, say, Bruce, for the same amount, or because of your age, it's 20 years after the fact you bought this product, um, it, it's going to cost a little more, but you're healthy, take advantage of it. Plus, your wife needs a lot of money, man. She needs $2,000 a month just to pay the bills off. And the way you're leaving it isn't going to handle that. So, my suggestion is you look at what you have in cash value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to contact Transamerica. I work with them. They're one of the companies that I can offer you to. And I'm going to find out what the cash value is for you guys. It's money that's yours. So you really do need to know what's inside this bucket. Okay. So they're probably going to ask for permission for you to speak, me to speak on your behalf when I call. But here's how it's going to go. I'm going to dial Transamerica. Ring, ring. Hi, I'm going to do a, uh, a policy review on a Bruce, uh, Bruce whatever. And uh, my name's Jason. I'm a, I'm a rep with you. My rep number is bang, bang, boom, bang, bang, boom, boom. And then they're going to put me in position to put Bruce on the phone to ask permission. I'm not the writing sales rep on this policy. We're doing a policy review. If they say, what's a policy review? Say, I want to check the cash values and check what the premiums are and just see what the product is. Okay. At this point, um, you probably ask them too if they have the policy too. So, Mr. Jones, do you actually have the policy? Nine times out of 10, they, they usually you don't even have a pro product, believe it or not. So, call them, get that information off of them, tell the company to say the cash value live on the speaker. And ask the client, have you ever taken a loan from this policy? Oh, no, we've never touched it. They have $6,000 in cash value. Well, Mr. Jones, this is good news. You can ask, you can find out, This you just found out that you're worth $6,000 in cash. Now I teach them, if the policy's worth $10,000, 
and you have $6,000 in cash value, they only owe you $4,000 compared to when you started, they owe you 10. So if you can understand this math, the company only owes them 6,000 of the 10,000 because $6,000 is cash value is the clients. So the life insurance company truly only owes them at this point $4,000 to that 10. Now people start waking up and seeing the light. Oh, you're right. Okay. Well, here's what I have for you. I'm going to go over what I have for you. And the cancellation process uh, is usually, I think with Transamerica, it can be written out. So on a sheet of paper, you can literally write, uh, my name is Bruce. I would like to cancel policy number, get the policy number too. Always ask for the policy number when you're on the phone with the client, with the, with the companies. You got to always get the policy number. And if you're doing annuities, you have to get the issue date too. So policy number, we got that. Now we're going to review what you have for them. If he's a healthy 50 year old, I'm going to tell you right now, you could get him freaking uh, an index product would be very high. It'd be like 50, 25 to 50 grand for uh, probably 50 to 75 bucks a month. And then you'd be able to show him his cash values plus get him 6,000. That would win all day long. I'd sell this deal and I'd probably sell it higher knowing that he has more cash uh, every month. I'd probably try to get him at a hundred to two, 300 bucks a month for retirement reasons and show him why he should build a nest egg. Now, on top of that, if you don't want that and you're only selling final expense products, Mutual of Omaha, you can use Mutual of Omaha's GUL and use that product to, uh, to, to, to sell at, uh, at a high level too. So um, using the GUL at uh, Mutual of Omaha or just using the final expense uh, products that they offer of prosperity. But look at the difference in price between Mutual, uh, GUL, the LSW product would offer uh, an insight for living benefits too. That would help you sell that product. Um, for now, let's just stick to this. So final expense, Mutual of Omaha would probably be your best bet. Get them a price. Here, I'm going to tell you what it would be right now inside my phone. I'm going to look at what it would be for a 50-year-old male inside my app. Do all you have this app inside your phone, by the way? This Mutual of Omaha app? Yep. All right, Jerome, you have this too? Jerome, you have this? Wait. I got yes, I have it. Okay. And then uh, whoever else is on here, get this app. So anyway, I'm going to go to Living Promise. I'm going to type in the state. I'm just going to do this very quickly. Just hang in there. I'm going to type in a 50 year old and by the way, and I'm going to just shoot for the $10,000 and see what 10,000 comes to first and then calculate that. So $10,000 is $29 and 16 cents. And then I'm going to close that up. I'm going to type in another number. I'm going to shoot for 20, 25,000. I'm going to really beat this out. 25,000, 6,809. I'm going to go one more. I'm going to type in $50,000. Don't be afraid of these big numbers. Oh, it only goes up to 40. Sorry, I forgot. 40,000. And 40 grand is 107.01. .01. Now you have these numbers. And you say, oh, you know what? I might be able to beat these numbers. Um, give me one second. If you guys are illustrating LSW, you can call. Or you can go in here and do the guaranteed issue. Um, where is that, by the way? The Guaranteed Universal Life Express. Well, I'm going to just show you what that would be in comparison. Uh, I'm going to type in a mail. This is Mutual of Omaha's guaranteed product here for a uh, GUL. Check this out. For $25, it's or 25,000, it's $38.93 compared to $68. For final expense. Now, the problem with this is, is you beginners don't know how to teach people how to overfund these. These could lose money in, in the process on these ULs, so you have to be careful. And then you can type in fifty thousand dollars real quickly. Would be oh shit. I got and guaranteed period. It says till age ninety five. 
which is good to know. So it goes to age 95. So $50,000 in the GUL is $77.85. $50,000 in final expense, guaranteed age 120. This is goes to 95. The other one goes to age uh, goes to uh, age uh, 120, is 107.01. Now, there's two things I need you to know. You're going to make more money off this final expense product than you will these GULs. So B, and they take a little longer sometimes, the index products. You're going to guarantee, final expense is like practically guaranteed to go through if somebody's really healthy and no meds. Still with these index products, there can be some background checks. They're, they check very thoroughly, uh, usually. But um, sometimes they don't, and it goes through quick. So it's up to you. It's about a price. Who gives a shit? Just sell the deal. You know what I'm saying? Sell the deal. It's about finances. What fits in their budget? So at first, you got the 107 for $50,000. Let's just stick with the final expense living promise. Uh, he probably is going to say yes. He's still young enough. He's 50 years old. It's 100 bucks a month. Tell them uh, you're also earning 3% interest annually as cash value. So what has just happened? I need to explain this to them. What has just happened, Mr. Jones, is you have a policy with Transamerica for $10,000. You called me out here for final expense to look at getting you some more final expense. Uh, what I did was find you $25,000 for close to what you're used to paying. It's a couple dollars more, but you know it's not too bad. Plus, you're earning cash value. But today, in about 14 days, you guys are going to receive a check for $6,000. So what I'm going to tell you to do, take the money. Don't leave it with the insurance company. Take the cash value and start a new product. Put in that money. Use that money to pay for this product. Now they're thinking about, oh, my God, I have $6,000. I can use that money to pay for this new product, and it doesn't even come out of pocket. So I'm using that cash value to pay for the new product. Whether they do that or not, I don't know. But that's something I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys to, to take a look at. So they have that, and that's about it. That wraps it up, man. It's not too much more. Sign the deal, close it up, review it again with them. So what has happened here today after you write up the policy, ask them the questions, do the phone interview. Mr. Jones, what we did today is we took your $10,000 policy. We're not going to cancel that out until this new one goes through. I need you to pick a date. When are you used to getting that other product taken out of your bank account? Uh, on the 15th. Okay, is the 15th work for this one too or can we set another date because I don't want two products coming out at the same time. Don't have two products coming out at the same time. You need to change the dates up. If, they're, if you do it at the same date, you're not canceling one policy out on the spot. If they are healthy though, and I'm, I swear to you, if they're totally healthy, completely healthy, and you know you've done a phone interview and you've got a yes, try to cancel the policy on the spot. Take it home fax the information in, cancel the policy, get them to sign a sheet of paper, or ask Transamerica their cancellation process when they're on the phone. Make sure you ask that, because I forget. I don't know if you're just able to write on a sheet of paper and then get the fax number. If you're writing, please cancel my policy. I'm Bruce, policy number. Send my cash value to the address on my, on my information status. Um, and what's your fax number, Transamerica? Fax that information in as soon as you get home and write that new product up and get the other one out of the way, get the new one in place, tell them their cash value will be there in about uh, 14 to 21 days, and you closed a big deal. You will earn about $1,200 on that deal for spending one to two hours with them. And um, that's just how their ball rolls. But you still have Mrs. Jones to sell too. So you're probably going to walk out of this situation with $150 to $200 in premium. And that's how you do it for final expense. Any questions about final expense sales? That's a, a pumpkin shake with protein powder in it. That'll fuel my muscles, my jaw muscles from wrapping. Okay, no questions. Great, wonderful, fantastic. Let's move on. Mortgage protection. Um, 
Okay, so here's the deal. We have mortgage protection is a higher premium sale completely anyone. So nine times out of 10, a lot of people are using return of premium products, which aren't out too much, kind of expensive. They're using term to term out the mortgage. Um, most of the time I'm using the index products or final expense products to sell mortgage protection. And it isn't that difficult. It's the same process, to be honest with you. So mortgage protection leads come to you. They're 47 bucks a pop, but we have them for $3 also. So it's important that you guys get involved with mortgage protection because there are cheaper leads out there. For people that can write, they will give you these leads, but you gotta be prepared for this stuff. You gotta know the product that you're selling. If you know the product you're selling, you can sell this stuff. So you've got to learn about Mutual of Omaha's GUL product. That's one you can use, or it's called the Express product. Give me one second, guys. Look at that. Here. Okay, so mortgage protection. Mortgage protection, I use the index products, usually use LSW's Index Universal Life product. Um, I'm gonna need everybody watch this board here. So if you can't see, start seeing. And I, I'm gonna need interaction. So I'm asking every one of you to come up with some questions. Come up with questions of scenarios that you may think you may be in so you can get the knowledge that you need to be able to sell these products. So again, mortgage protection and sales, I use LSW. You can use term products though. They have, uh, they have term products that you can learn. American Amabical. The reason you use the term products for the living benefits too, um, but the LSW has uh, living benefits too. How do you know what to use? Well, it just goes, I guess it comes down to price and scenario. If they're younger, you can put a big term product on them to cover that mortgage for a while, okay? Uh, for 30 years that they have, and if they're a young couple. If they're older, I usually don't do this because it's pretty expensive, and I go to this one, which is a little cheaper, and it goes to death, and it comes with living benefits. Um, the last resort in mortgage protection is final expense. So you always have an option. This is one, two, three options to use. LSW, term, American Amigo, uh, what the hell else do they use? I, I don't sell term too much. Does anybody know what else they can use? Where the hell is Heather at? She always helps me. What else do we use for final expense? Jason, you got a question. Yeah. You said the LSW, if they're older, would that be older and create damn good health? Does that mean what? Because the LSW is saying that they have to be really healthy. So you said you typically use LSW if they're older, but they have to be in really good health. Hold on one second.
Okay, so ask that question again. I'm sorry, I had to answer that. Well, you said if they're young, use the term product to cover the mortgage. And he says they're older, you typically use LSW. We were talking the other day that LSW, they're really really picky about them being in great health, but they're going to be chances of older people not being in great health are high. So is term. So I'm talking about term and LSW. So they're both picky about health. So either way you go, it's very pretty picky about health. But I'm, not, I'm talking about picky about health means that you have to get to a point where you understand what that means. Um, picky about health means if they, they still can have diabetes and get the product. I'm talking about like if somebody come out of camp for freaking surgery four years ago and they just had heart surgery four years ago and you're going to know this stuff. So that's inside the, the, the questions that you ask, Brian, is what yeah. this question that you're asking right now, it's a good question and all you need to hear this. What you need to do is read the apps and then you'll know. You'll know what situations you're running into and there's a sheet out there that they put together. It was on GroupMe that put the what products to use for what medications they're on. There is a there's a there's a scientific approach to this if you know what to, what the apps say. So picky can be different scenarios, and that's a tough question to answer, right? You know, because I don't know what the scenario is. So I would have to throw scenarios at this situation, saying. If you had a 60-year-old male and he just came out of heart surgery a year ago, they're not going to get these products. He's going to be graded, okay? Uh, if you had a heart surgery four years ago, usually anything four years ago that has to do with cancer is a tough one if they're still on medications for it. But if they get cancer, it's a different story. So it comes down to medications versus what they have. They're still on the medication for the issue that they had at the time or that they had the surgeries, then it's probably going to be a final expense arrangement or graded. But for these two products, anything else will go. So you're using these in the situations which mortgage protection is usually people still working and in better health. Uh, nine times out of ten, it can be that. But where we live, Brian, older people buy homes here. So be prepared for all of the facts that they're going to have medications. They're going to be older so what I would think about using is two things. The mutual of Omaha is your go-to for final expense. And uh, the GUL, and study up on that and ask the carriers. Say, where would I use this product at? How would I use this particular product? And um, use that for final expense. Or final expense is just another word for life insurance. So any one of these situations, all you're doing is trying to find the best situation for somebody price-wise. So all your job is to find the most that comes out for the least amount. So when you're in front of somebody, you need time to do research. That's why you're there for information, to give them the information, but you give them a premium price. So everybody, get your apps out this week. All your apps. Get Mutual of Omaha. Get... Uh, Get uh, the LSW app for the Index Universal Life. Um, get the GUL app and read them thoroughly. Go over them question by question, read it, and understand the scenarios you're going to run into. And then you have your answers. And then answer it. Say, if this answer was no on this question, what would I be able to get them? If I can't get them an index product or, or, or this term, it's very, it's it, all you guys need to, all the, all of you right now are only a couple steps away from earning big money. And I truly believe it's just knowing the products better, presenting a product better. If you can do that and do some math with them, like their issue, what's the need? Or you have this much going out, Mrs. Jones, but you have this much coming in. What product do you have, Mrs. Jones? And then telling them what they need to do to uh, better their situation for the future. Don't think about now too much. I mean, I want you to think about now, but I really want you to enforce the later on in life to them. And that's where inflation helps you make a sale. But you really do need to learn the products, Brian, and, and, and that is basically very quickly done by you contacting the carrier and asking them questions. And that's what I advise all of you to do is contact your carriers and ask them different questions about the different products that they offer. And just tell them what you plan on selling. Say, if I'm going to sell final expense, what do you think the best product to use would be? 
And if I sell mortgage protection, do you offer any products for mortgage protection? And what would I use for that? I'm new at the game. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. And that's it. Because they will inform you on the products. And ask them about their webinars, too. They all host webinars at the carriers. And they can get you on a regular schedule to send you emails about webinars that they host. So that's also good. However, you can go to YouTube and type in the LSW product, the say uh, Index Universal Life from uh, LSW, or you can type in uh, 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 um, the uh, the the one from Mutual of Omaha, the GUL Express. Hold on a second. Let me try something here. I'll show you YouTube real quick. Uh, Trans America has one too. Or what the hell's the other name? It's National. They're really called National Group Life. I know that's kind of confusing, but check this out. Hello, everybody. This is a Thursday uh, morning training session that uh, we uh, um, um, are. Are, are, that we do every Thursday, and I appreciate. Obviously, I always talk about in our, in our meetings this life insurance. There it is. We sell, we sell life insurance, and uh, and also it covers you if you uh, are are become ill. Uh, you know. Um, you guys all see you, this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and this is a big part of uh, you know our, our mantra. Uh, you know about. Um, um, the living benefits and, and the value of that and, and, and becoming ill um, is, is, is really important. Um, so well, all you need to do uh, is really watch this. You, know, you get cancer, you get heart yeah. attack, you get stroke, I'm put, uh, you get something yeah. along those lines. Uh, you know, uh, now uh, you're, you're covered. The guys, you know, um, living benefits is, is, is a... Here it is right here, I think. Um, you, you, United of Omaha, GUL. Marketing. Yeah. All right. Now, at the end of 2014, we um, changed the accelerated death benefit rider to provide additional benefits to our There's benefits that GUL has so too. It has life benefits in it too. In so don't, don't think it doesn't. It does. And also in it has accelerated death benefit. So it allows them. Uh, up to $1 million or 80% of the death benefit of the accelerated death is terminal illness means that if they have 12 months to live, that they're allowed to access 80% of the death benefit while they're still alive. The difference between these two is that LSW is 24 months. So what I want you guys to do is spend time on YouTube, man. It's all right up here. Here's a uh, GUL tips, mutual of Omaha site for term offering. Here's term. And then, obviously, you can go into American Amical, too, for their term products and study it all right there, to be honest with you. And, and that, that's a very simple way of learning, and that's how I did it, too. But using the carriers, too. A lot of access to a lot of information, guys. It's right at your fingertips. So I would study the hell out of the apps, all of you. Before you walk into a home, man, don't fumble these apps around. Know exactly where the signatures go. Hell, we even highlight them. I don't care. Just show yourself. It make it simpler on yourself inside the home. Any more questions? I'm going to keep this one short today and sweet. It's been an hour already. But that wasn't a bad question, Brian. That was a, a question where it needed answered, too, because if you're wondering about that, my suggestion is going to the app reading the app, and then knowing the situations that you'll be in 
to use the different products? I, that's a h- tough question to answer because I can't tell you what situation you may be in to answer that particular question. But your go-to is LSW for, for mortgage protection, unless you find that you're a term guy and you like the term products with living benefits, you may like the GUL and your last situation will be the final expense so that you have three different scenarios to put a person in. You have three different ways of pulling numbers in. And if you have a a, a laptop or even your phone and there's two of you in the home, one can be doing numbers while the other one is talking. And that makes it easier. If your wife and husband out there, the sales go much smoother because one of you is, you know, doing the, uh, doing the uh, uh, numbers while the other one, the other one is talking. But anyway, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, mortgage protection is about the same strategy. You just use the knowledge I've given you over the time that I've given it to you and use and apply it to mortgage protection, meaning what I gave you for final expense is about the same thing that you use for mortgage protection. You walk towards the door, you say, I'm going to use that chair over there, Mrs. Jones. I'm going to sit at that table. We need to lay out some things. I'm going to treat you just like you're in my office. I'm going to get you involved in this. Just like you're in my office, we're going to go through some things, and I'm going to help you uh, protect this mortgage. So in mortgage protection, we get you um, some numbers put together, but let me go over a few things with you. The mortgage costs what monthly? In mortgage protection, the only thing I do differently is I kind of ask them, you know, what to, I, I will go through the fact I wrote their name down at the, at the first thing as I wrote their name down at the top of the paper. I know their age, same thing. I have him and her. And then I go over mortgage monthly is about what? I'm going to also ask them what the, what the, uh, what the appraisal was on the home. I, anybody want to know why I asked the appraisal on a home for mortgage protection? Can you figure out why I would ask what the appraisal is compared to what the debt is? So let's say something. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The equity in a home, maybe? Finance. Now you got it. That's it. That's exactly it. I want to know what, how much equity is in the home. Because with mortgage protection, that's the number you're trying to save is the equity in the home. Believe it or not, I mean, understand this. When somebody dies and they're trying, they, they think, people, for whatever reason, people think when they die that their home just like becomes their kids and there's still $70,000 owed on the house. That's not true. They have to apply for a mortgage. And if the bank owes it at that time, owns the place at that time, because remember this, the bank has mortgage protection on all your homes. So they pay off the debt by mortgage protection. They already got a re- they got something on you. In case you die, they pay the damn thing off. So you have a short period of time while you die to get this thing sold while t- t- so it can become your family's uh, uh, legacy to get the equity out of the home. So if I have a $200,000 home and the, they do a refinance, this is refinance and mortgage protection, which means they just bought a new home. So remember, there's two scenarios. Let's see they refi. And in a refi, they would have, let's say that they refied for 150000 Well, the equity, let's ask what the appraisal on the home was. The appraisal on the home is $250,000. They bought it years ago for two hundred, dollars so it's 30 years ago. Now, this debt on it is one hundred and fifty. dollars well, immediately I know that, holy shit, there's $100,000 in equity in the home. That's what we're trying to protect. Find out what the equity is in the home and protect that number. Because if, God forbid, somebody passes away tomorrow, that's the number they truly lose. They don't lose 250000 The kids do, but the individual doesn't. The kids get all of that money. So if they sell the house... They sell the house at two hundred fifty thousand. They get that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Your kids would lose because they didn't have the ability 
to pay off the $150,000 debt. But the equity in the home is used for this reason and this reason only. Mrs. Jones, if you were forced to leave this home, you need to have enough time to sell the home to get the $100,000 out of it. So the house is worth 250 in appraisal. They bought it for 200 grand. They refinanced for 150,000. That means between the 150,000 refinance and the $250,000 appraisal is $100,000 in equity so far. Mrs. Jones, if he died tomorrow, because of now, before this guys, you went through everything too. You didn't just get here. Again, you have to go through the, 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 all the bullshit to get here. You have to know their name, know their age, split it, both people, whoever's there with them. Ask uh, the questions in order. So we're going through who's to hire the two social securities. You know, again, it's just repetition. $2,000 uh, on, on Mary here a month. And I'm going to say that she's uh, 65 and uh, Mr. Jones is 65. I'm going to call him, call him Bruce again. Uh, he brings in um, $3,000 a month. Now, guess what? When he dies, that number becomes hers. Understand that. When Bruce dies, Mary gets $3,000, not her $2,000. Now, her $2,000 comes off the table. They're used to earning $5,000 a month. Now, she's down to $3,000 a month. And... To get that number in place, she has to wait a year because of Social Security, up to a year. So it could be bad. She could be living off $2,000 a month. Now, her mortgage monthly is $1,000 a month. The car payment is $500. That's $1,500, and she only has $2,000 coming in. So right there, I know she's doomed. She can't stay here. She has to be forced to sell the house. Plus, if it's 10 years from now, there's inflation. So she's really effed up. So what you need to figure out is tell her that she has 2,000 bucks a month to live on for one year. What, ye, what she needs is another $2,000 a month. So what I would do is I would write an LSW product up on her for $25,000 or the Mutual of Omaha GUL at $25,000 for this particular situation. And you can check on term too. You can go into your app in American Amico, I think. I'm not sure if I have the app. Does anybody have an app for American Amico on their phone? I don't even know if they have one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have one too, Heather. Oh, I don't have her sign-in number. So, do me a favor. I want to see how much a term product would be. Can you do that on that phone? Yeah, I think. All right, figure out how much it would cost to cover $150,000 in term. And make it, uh, it's 30 years. So, but there's age 65 anyway, and they're healthy non-smokers. Age 65, healthy non-smoker on a male. Just do that. See how many years you can get out of it. It might just go to 20. All right, let me check. All right. I just muted you out, so come back. Unmute yourself when you come back. Um, I have National Life Group on my phone, too, uh, which has a app also. So you can get this app. I'm not sure if I can share it with you. I don't know, some screwed up. But anyway, um, anyway, I'm going to go th through this real quick. I'm seeing if I can get this app working. It's not working. It sucks. Forgot password. 
Okay, in the meantime, again, I would use the OSW. Huh? What's that? What was the age again? I'm sorry. 65. 65? Yeah. Okay, so what was the age again? I'm sorry. 65 is the age of the individual. Why would I do that? I'm such an asshole. Sorry, guys. I need this number to um, process this. But anyway, what, what you're doing here is buying Mrs. Jones' time. These are the scenarios you run into. Let me tell you what you run into with mortgage protection. You run into buying the living whoever the beneficiary is or the, the significant other in the house time to sell the house. So you're buying them a year or two in time financially through mortgage protection to sell the home because they don't have enough money due to the fact the other person's dead. They don't have enough money coming in now to be able to afford the house. So I hope I know I don't want this to get confusing. It's, I hope it's simple to understand as simple as I can make it. It's just going to be, we got to review this over and over, week in and week out. So what you have is the ability to pay off the house or pay the monthly mortgage to the home while you're living in it until you can get the sales number, which is $250,000. Hence meaning, Mrs. Jones, you can sell this house in 30 days. You'd have freaking $22,000 plus the 100000 in equity in the home you'd walk away with $122,000. Now, worst case scenario, you sell it in a year, you have 100,000. So you're gonna earn off this home, and this is your retirement plan, Mrs. Jones. You need to do this, you can't mess around with this. You think you're gonna be able to stay here, you're not, you, you just can't pull it off. You got 2,000 bucks a month in, possibly for a one year situation until you receive his $3,000 a month in social security. Social Security. At that time, you only have three thousand bucks a month, and if this happens ten to fifteen years from now, inflation on three thousand, it's going to be more like two thousand dollars you're working with in fifteen years. So you need to be very careful that you don't lose any equity in the homes up. So at that point, you have a home that's valued at two hundred thousand dollars, and that's your equity in your home. So you definitely don't want to play with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to write up a deal that's about twenty five thousand dollars. Now, if you wanted to pay the home off due to your budget, I don't advise you guys need to do that. If you're moving, Mrs. Jones, and I always ask, would you stay here if he was dead or gone? If he wasn't here anymore, God forbid Bruce is gone. If he wasn't here anymore, would you live in this house anymore? And depending on the house and their physical activity situation, they may say no or where they live or where their family is or where they originally are from. Some people in our situation is Florida. So some people around here don't have like up in Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania, they may have roots there. So they might be like, yeah, I'll stay here. Well, here's the deal. I don't, you can't, you're not going to be able to afford it. So I'm sorry to tell you, I'm just being honest, which I don't want you to lose a home due to the fact you believe that you can stay here. I'll get a roommate. Yeah, that's great and everything, but you know, that doesn't always work. They die too. So if whoever you're thinking about dies and they're not around, you got to always have a, a, a backup to what they say. The, it's called objections. All they're doing is going through the flow of a sale, so don't take it personal. They're not fighting with you. They're battling for a way to survive, okay? That's our human spirit, fighting for what they believe is theirs, which isn't. They think they own a damn place, and they own, uh, what they own is payments on a damn place. So you have to be the authority in the home. You really got to stand your ground with these people, and don't take objections so seriously. Don't be afraid of objections. What you got to do is wear them down, wear them down, wear them down. I'm not interested. I'll tell you what, I'm going to review a couple things with you. Again, you know, if we take a look at what we just put together here, it's a roadmap to your future. It literally tells me that you are left with $2,000 for the next year. And I know you can agree with that because if his money's not coming in, you know that you're left with $2,000. You agree with that? Get them doing this shit. Get the head going out. Did you see your head move, Jerome? That's, that's the science behind us. If your head goes up and down, their head will too. So shake your head up and down, yes. 
Yes. Get the yeses out of them. Uh, does anybody know how to play the yes question game? Like, let's get some yeses out of people. What, what would be a good way to get a yes out of somebody? Does anybody have any strategy or, or, or sayings that they use in the house to get somebody to say yes? And then it doesn't matter what it is. What would you say to get somebody to say yes in a house? How about um, if the sky is blue today, you know, uh, do, do you agree, Mrs. Jones, that the sky is blue today? Yes, but that doesn't have anything to do with this, so don't do that. So what we want to do is get them yesing on this. So the question I asked was this, Mrs. Jones, you know that you have $2,000 a month. When his, when his, when his $3,000 are gone, you have to agree with me that you're only left with $2,000 with money. Uh, do you agree? And shake your head yes. Believe me, once they start seeing your head go yes, their brain starts activating. And it, it all changes the atmosphere and it changes the, the, uh, the, the physicality of the individual you're working with, Mr. or Mrs. For you ladies out there, uh, uh, and you may be a little tinier than men who are dealing with bigger men, don't hold your ground as the authority, okay? Hold your ground, man. Don't let them intimidate you by size. Intimidate them by knowledge and you will win every time. So, I got Mrs. Jones. I even got Jerome to shake his head yes. And I was role playing. Okay. So that's how powerful it is. And, and, and a great part about it is that Jerome understands what happened there and, and he can use that. So uh, we have the $25,000. We have $25,000 uh, at GUL, um, LSW. I don't know. Hey, did you get that answer to that uh, question, Heather? Yeah, $70.41, and the highest it can go is a 20-year. And that's for $150,000? Oh, no, I thought you said twenty-five. dollars Oh, I'm sorry. I, I do want twenty-five dollars too. I, I do need that, but I do. I wanted to pay the ho the debt on the home, too, so please just let me know what one hundred fifty dollars is, too. Okay, one second. So right now we have $75 a month for $25,000, and it's good for 20 years. Now, that sucks because in 20 years, they're going to be 85 years of age, invested all this money. Do the math. Add $70.43 times 12 months and then multiply that by 20. And somebody tell me what the hell that number is because that's their investment. Okay, for $150,000, it's $391. Hold on one second, buddy. The other one is going to be sixteen nine twenty-two. Okay, sorry. What was 150? Three hundred and ninety-one dollars and fourteen cents. Three hundred ninety-one dollars and fourteen cents a month. Now, if you could figure out their budget, you could figure out a way for them to come up with that money. However, that's a term product that doesn't do it. Doesn't what the hell's that bring? That doesn't bring up any way spending that much money. And in in twenty years, does anybody know what that comes to? How much do we spend three hundred ninety-one dollars a month for the next twenty years? I need somebody to figure that out while I figure out Mutual of Omaha, what it would cost to do this with the GUL situation with Mutual of Omaha. And then remember, last resort would be final expense, $25,000 in final expense. $93,840. Holy shit. Right, do me a favor, add 7.4% interest to that. I'll tell you why. Just take 93,840 plus 7.4% interest, and I hope you're not driving doing this, girlfriend. 
How'd you guess? <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got $25,000. $25,000 at the GUL Express. It's called the GUL Express. $96.07. Five sixty thirty is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's the difference. So you can see where the price difference, if they really wanted to cover that number, don't be afraid to show them. Just tell them, look, I have every carrier out there, guys. You gotta let them understand that even if you brought another guy in here. I have everything that they have. So whatever they're going to present you, I'm already presenting. You. You're just going to see the same numbers over and over again. That's it. We all use the same carriers, Mrs. Mrs. Jones or Bruce or Ann, whatever the hell their name is. So make sure that they're clear on not, because you don't want them finding other people to work with. Oh, I have somebody else coming in. You know, that's fine and everything, but I'm going to tell you right now that we have the same product. Well, look, I could call that rep right now and get a number over the phone for you. You know, sometimes you got to do that too if you want. Tell them, look, let's call the rep. He has, he can give you the, the estimate over the phone. They, they can do that. They, I mean, I could have did that too, but I mean, I'm obviously better off the way I do things, teaching you about these numbers coming to you. Remember, I told you I was going to act like we were in my office. And that's, this is how I treat every client for the past 10 years and this is how you need to understand these numbers. You need to make sure that all the numbers meet the need. All the numbers meet the need, meaning today's numbers meet the need. It has to be in your budget today, Mrs. Jones, obviously, and it also has to be in the budget of the future. So I'm not here to take any food off the table. I'm here to prevent food from being taken off the table at a time that you don't have the right income. So these are the kind of words and language that you guys need to learn how to speak inside the home. And when you talk like this, you're blowing people away to a point where they believe and trust in you because of wisdom and, and, and authority. Holy shit, this guy just would not freaking leave, man. He just kept talking about, you know, and he was right. If you can be right and not a, like you're, maybe you're, maybe you're pushy salesman at that time. Maybe that's the case. But if you're right, they can never say that you're wrong and say that, hey, you know what, you, everything you just taught me is true. So you have to review too. I'm gonna to tell you right now, you have to review. If you're working with big numbers and you're trying to get $300 premiums and $1,000 premiums, and I don't want you guys to be afraid of asking if you know it's in their budget to do so. So what I want you to do is be authoritative, know the numbers, ask what the plan was, you know, know what the plan is to pay their debts and bills off, I meaning list it, put a list together. Everybody's bills are a little different. Everybody has a little something different in it, but most majority are the same. Uh, at the end, the numbers always change because somebody's income is different. So it's income versus debt ratio is what you're trying to figure out. And the last number is what you need. So last number is what you're using to and finding out if they already have life insurance. So I'm going to ask somebody on this screen to tell me how to do this. I want you to teach me how to do this. I want somebody on this screen to teach me how to walk through a door and just do exactly what I did. So who wants to role play just a little bit, just from the door, like here's what I'm asking you to do, is to the door, I want you to treat me like I'm Mr. Jones and see it in your mind like we're at the door and just like walk me through it. So get me to the table and then kind of present that part to me and that's it. So I just want you to get me to the table. So knock at the door and get me to the table. I want to see how you do it. Does anybody offer to ever take her shoes off too? Does anybody that ever does that? I'm unmuting all you right now too. So that is probably noisiest because she got her windows down, I guess. She does it. All right, so here we go. Heather, if you were to knock at my door, you would call me Jason, right? Correct. Okay. So when you walk into my home, 
do you present it in a way where you're kind of leading them to the table? Do you tell them, hey, Mr. Jones, would it be okay if we use the table? Or, or how, do you, how do you control that situation? Yeah, I generally see which direction they're going in the first place. And if they start making a beeline towards the couch, then um, that's when I say, ask the, you know, tell them that it will be a lot easier if I had a space to spread myself out, such as like their table, dining room table. Huh. And I start kind of like walking that way. That's a great answer. So she said, Heather said, if they started beelining towards the couch, she's going to inform them that she has some information to present to them and that she would be better off using the table. Period. That's it. And she said it very smoothly, very smooth. So they want to work with her, man. They want to go to the table. Sure, let's go to the table. What the hell's the difference? They don't know. You're in their house. They think, here's why they, some people go to the couch. One, they think you're more comfortable. Okay? It's not about their comfortability all the time. Sometimes they're just trying to be nice. And they think by sitting on the couch, it's a comfortable place to sit. This is a business so you have to run it like a business and it has to be presented like a, like they're coming to your office, to be honest with you. Okay, so Heather, you're at the table and you're sitting down, I'm sitting to the right of you, and now you're pulling out what? What do you pull out? You got a bag or are you just talking to me? Depends, right? Um, I have... I'm sorry, you broke up, what? I said it depends on the scenario, I know, but let's make it simple. I'm sitting to the right-hand side of you. We have a square, rectangular table. It's got two seats on each side and one at each head. So you're sitting at the head of the table, I'm sitting to the right, and uh, you're trying to talk me into this final expense thing. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, what, what, what I'm doing here. So I say, you know, maybe you want me to show me the card. If it's a card, if it's a mailer, by the way, always show them the mailer. If it's uh, mortgage protection, always show them the final expense mortgage protection and show them their signature or show them something that they wrote and get them they, they get that part out of the way. Get the part out of the way while you're there is what I'm telling you to do. Yeah, I'm here to uh, handle your, uh, you know, just give you some information. That's it. That's what you need to say. You don't say I'm here for final expense, your life insurance. But I don't want to hear that. I'm here to give you information about your what you could qualify for in final expense, life insurance. That'd be okay. But saying I'm here for I'm a life insurance rep, you know, uh, that's kind of like amateur, and it it, it kind of like blows them off. It gets them to think about money. And I, what's really trying to help you avoid is getting them to think about money. So, uh, Mr. Jones, I'm here. Jason, I'm here to talk about um, helping you qualify for uh, your uh, final arrangements. And um, I got the uh, – you had received a call the other day, and that's why I called you yesterday and set this appointment up so I can bring my office to you. So I'm going to treat this just like you're at my office, and this is just about finding you some – um, numbers. So if you've got forbid you pass away that we can, you know, your family can afford to pay all the debts off and, and with inflation, you never know what burial could be or cremation. So if you don't have any life insurance on you, which is fine, then we're going to find you the right number for the most amount. And that's my job as a broker. Uh, and you know, if you have life insurance, great. By, by the way, do you have any life insurance? Yeah, I have all that taken care of. Oh, really? That's great. Wonderful. I'll tell you what, while I'm here, let's just see if we can beat the rate. What do you pay a month? Oh, I pay $100 a month. How much is that worth? Oh, it's worth $150,000. What do you think that product is? Anybody know what that is? If somebody tells you they pay $100 a month, and I'm 42 years of age, and it's a $150,000 payout, is that whole life or term? <laughs> No. I would say either term or an index annuity. That's right. It's either term or index index product. Now, a whole life product would be for one hundred fifty thousand would be a lot more expensive. Probably be like three hundred dollars. Now, is there a chance it could be whole life? Well, in this state, yeah, it could be whole life in a way where. Um, it's an index universal life whole life. That's that's probably what it would be, or it's term. So those two answers. 
what that does is ask, the first thing I tell them is I say, look, so when does that term out? I don't even guess if it's term or whole life. I ask them, when does that term out? And they know. Uh, I have about 10 years left on that. But it was 20 years. I imagine he bought it. I'm 42. I probably bought it 20 years ago. Yeah, I wanted to have some. I got this deal. It was like crazy. And, and that's, but look, at the bottom line is, is, if that was 20 years ago, this would be more like 50 bucks, to be honest with you. But for this scenario, we'll just keep it the same. 10 years, I have left on it. So in 10 years, you're going to be looking for this stuff again. So what my suggestion is, let me, let me put some numbers down. I might be able to get close to that number for the same amount you're spending now. So what you'll do is you need the Index Universal Life products to do that. You can't do final expense with this particular situation and find $150,000 in life insurance for close to 100 bucks. Now, even if he's paying more, that's okay too, and I'll tell you why. When you are able to get an illustration, you're gonna call LSW, okay? And you're gonna contact them and say, I wanna do an illustration on a male non-smoker 42 years of age, and I wanna present it for the most cash value earned. There's two scenarios you can run. One is to be less cash value and less premium, but do both. Say, because Alyssa runs it for me for both. So you can run it for less premium or higher cash values and a little more premium. So run it for both. So I need, what do you need? You need three different visions of this. You need 25,000, do the lowest amount. Always do the lowest amount too. Uh, do the 150,000, show them what that would be. And that's okay because you're going to show them the cash value sheet. So inside your email, when you open it up, get a printer. Ask them, hey, Bruce, do you have a printer? Oh, great. Can I print this out? I'm going to show you this scenario. It's fantastic. You're going to, you're going to, it's going to blow you away. It comes with living benefits. It's got huge cash value earnings, a lot of benefits to this. Show them the cash value earnings. And when they see how much money like $200 a month would be in 40 years or 20 years from now, I'm sorry, 20 years from now, they're going to be blown away by how much money they put away. So maybe they can't get a hundred grand. So do it for 150 and do 75,000. Here's the secret though. Which one stays in place in 10 years from now and the premium is level. And by the way, they're going to ask you what age you want to run it to. In this case, run it to age 95. Because the less time you put on it, the less money it is. So when you run Index Universal Life, they ask, what age do you want to run it to? And you can run it to age 80, which should be like a term product, but it'd be less amount, but it earns cash value. It's weird. It's really strange how it, it blows. It's like confusing to me sometimes how it all works. But there's some mathematical genius putting this shit together. I think it could be put together a lot easier, but they do it the way they do it. I got $25,000, I got $75,000, I have hundred and fifty. So I'm just gonna check real quick on a GUL what this would cost. So the Guaranteed Universal Life Express, Heather, do you know anything about that? And that's, that's usually cheaper, that's, one, that's the one that's for better health, or I can't remember the difference between the two. Um, it's for good health, I mean, they can have slight problems, not many. Um, but that's the one you can be up to 65 for the express to get it done. Now check this out. He's paying $100 a month for $150,000 in life insurance. And I have a whole life product that'll stay in play forever. And it earns cash value. Comes with living benefits. So make sure you have the living benefit. They should provide that. They should gotta have something at, at, at Mutual of Omaha that provides information about living benefits for these GULs. Uh, so get that off of them so you can give it to clients. I'm gonna send you a fucking box for them. $141 a month gets you $150,000 and it's whole life. So boom, you guys just made 1500 bucks on that deal. But let's take it down a bit. Let's turn it down and say, look, I don't need 150. You know what, your mortgage is paid off. It's going to be 30 years from now. Why don't we just check out what $100,000 would be like, too? That's 94 bucks. That's, these are how you get the deals done. The next products are always going to show you a higher – that's just why I sell a hell out of them, because they always show you higher numbers. If you got somebody healthy, do it this way. And you guys all can sell GULs. 
everybody on here, I want you to get the applications for the GUL products this week. Everybody's going to start selling GULs. Everybody's going to start selling index products. LSW is a little more difficult. So everybody that wants to sell that product, we have to get Alyssa on here. And I can have her share the screen. And she can go over how to do an illustration with LSW. LSW teaches you how to do an illustration. Where do you think Alyssa and I learned it from? So call that carrier and tell them you want to learn how to do illustrations for Index Universal Life products. Okay? And tell them you're going to be selling mortgage protection. But, okay, anybody have any questions? Heather, thank you for your help. Anybody have any questions? So I imagine if none of you have any questions, you're all going to earn $100,000 this year by 2018. That's what I'm guessing. Come on, pound it. Can everybody pound that? <laughs> okay, here's, a, here's another thing I want to tell you, is that selling these products is not difficult. Don't, who gives a shit if you don't know anything about them, you know, the product? Just know that inside this app, you're going to have to look the thing up, but you've got to screw up somewhere. So kind of, but don't screw up too bad. You can hurt people. So you have to understand what an index universal life is. So I need you all to study what it is. Just go out there on the internet and find out all you can about index universal lives and find out what they are. Uh, we have Allianz too, which is a, a another index product uh, that I'm going to research about too. But anyway, at the end of the day, this is stuff. Now, Inside your illustrations, too, the, the way we do it, you're going to be able to find indexed annuities, too, meaning money laying around. I also ask people, Mr. Jones or Bruce, how much is in the bank account? I just recently found $600,000 in a savings account because the guy doesn't trust the market, but he wants to earn his million dollars back. So I did an Athene uh, index annuity for him. The company's called Athene. And in 10 years, 10 years, this guy will take his 600 grand and it will get the one point two million dollars from the market without market volatility. So this is crazy numbers, and that number will pay me $600,000. Uh, I'll probably earn anywhere from 30, 40, 50 grand on that, just that one deal. So I didn't do it yet, so don't, you know, wish me the best. And, and, and all that does put me in a position to help you guys more. So believe me, I, I've earned my stripes to get those numbers. I really have. Uh, done my job when it comes to learning this stuff. But all it is, guys, is it's education, man. Like asking questions. So, Heather, what, I'll ask you guys questions. What are you doing this week that's going to help you make money? In, in this business, what are you going to do? You have a plan yet, or do we need to put a plan together? Um, I was just finishing up some pending. I need to, I need to order some leads this week for sure. Okay, that's a plan. That's good. That's a plan. There's a plan. Jerome, I know you haven't been ordering leads, so when are you going to order leads again? I just did. Oh, shit. <laughs> I wanted to hear that. I was hoping he'd say that. I was kind of messing with <laughs> Okay, how many did you order? Tell the group how much you ordered. What's this? How many did you order? How many did you, did you order? I ordered 20. Okay, 20 is good. And you ordered final expense? Yeah, they're all final expense. Are those the $15 leads? No, those are the 11 I'm confused on some of these leads. I mean, we got $15, $3. I mean... Does anybody know how to explain the lead process? Because I'm confused, too. Alyssa handles that for me. Uh, does anybody know how the leads work? Can anybody explain that to us? I believe on the innovative website, from what I gather from their little conference call the other day, you have the option if you do, if you directly order them through them. You have the option of eleven dollar leads, fifteen dollar leads. You check the ones you want right on that page. Now there are different sources that we can get them from. There are also like other ones that are fifteen dollar leads, like the uh, Infinity leads, the Press ones, or whatever. But if you order them directly through Innovative, I believe you can choose from the page there which ones you want. Whether you want the elevens, the fifteens, the mailers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Get that, Jerome. Just go to the innovative site and and, and uh, 
Brian, if you've been into the innovative site, would you know how to order leads right now? Could you order twenty fifteen dollar leads right now? Brian. Or you can email Rusty and you can put your order through him. Sorry, Jason. I was on mute. Oh, okay. Do you know yeah. how to order leads? Yeah. You do? Okay, good. Okay, that's it, I guess, man. Any questions in home or anybody uh, fumbling a ball on the phone? Uh, need help on the phone, anybody? Anybody want to go over? Uh, uh, does anybody know how to say the, the script without looking at the script? Do you know your uh, final expense script good enough for tele-leads that you can say it without the script? I'm sorry, who were you asking? I said, do you know the, the telephone script that good without the phone script? Uh, for final expense, that well enough to uh, to explain it? To do it? Um, yeah, I think so. All right. So, hello. I just answered the phone, Heather. Hello, Jason. Yeah. Hi, Jason. My name's Heather. How you doing today? I'm doing good. That's good. Uh, I'm just giving you a follow up call on that call you received the other day regarding final expense, and you had shown interest in getting some more information on this product. I am the agent that works in your area, and I'll be out in your area tomorrow about 1 p.m. Could you and Mrs. Jones be available at that time? Absolutely. That was perfect. Now, that, that, that doesn't get any better than that one, man. It's really smooth. It's right to the point. You didn't skip the point. The only beat it skipped is when she asked me how I was doing, but that's okay. I mean, I don't know how you're doing. I don't know. I'm doing all right, I guess. I'm doing I feel like great, you know. And sometimes you get the attitude of the person by doing that. And right after that, anyway, by the time you get to the end of the script, they forgot about how they're doing anyway. So that was good. I mean, without that being in front of her, that took a lot of practice to do that. And uh, she has that nailed. She says that a hundred times a week on the phone, she's going to earn $5,000 a week. That's how many times you have to say that on the phone a week or at least dial 100 people a week to get the 5,000 bucks. Honestly, guys, that's the numbers. If you don't have enough leads, order your leads. Get your lead numbers up. If you don't even have 100 leads, you need to find a way to get 100 leads. There are $3 leads. If you don't think you're ready for mortgage protection, tell yourself to go to hell. You're getting in your own way and start ordering the $3 mortgage protection leads. Go sell life insurance and help people. That's all you're doing. All of you have enough knowledge at this point to go sell any one of these products. And it's, don't, who cares if it's just a label. It says mortgage protection, final expense. All of it's just life insurance across the board. The only thing people are looking for in any scenario is the largest amount for the least amount that stays in place for life and never goes up in price. That's it. Get that for them. So go order leads and uh, have yourself a great weekend. Heather, thank you for your help and keep training the way you are and help me out. I'll, I'll take care of you in the future. Brian, I will talk to you and Denise later. Jerome, I'll see you later, buddy. I know you're getting tired. I've been talking a lot to you. And uh, remember, these are all recorded too, so if you need them later, they'll all be there. But thank you all for coming and I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Thanks, you too.